All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. For those of you who are watching the podcast on the YouTube this time, you might see that there's there's a lot going on visually, and I I really want to dive into that today. So uh, before before we get into any of that, today we have Catherine Morrison with us, and Catherine, for me as a follower of Catherine. I feel like she's one of the most magical people that I follow and I love seeing like I love seeing all the visuals that Catherine puts out and it's one of the reasons why I was really drawn towards Catherine in the first place I really want to dive into that um that that topic for today yeah yeah Yeah, but before we do that Catherine who are you and what do you do (laughs) So my name is Katherine Morrison and I run a coaching business online and I help people. I would say it's like people who are like part artist, part like strategic brain. So people come to me when they like want to run their business from like logic and intuition, creativity and strategy, structure and flow. And I'm like a really, I think a lot of people, they lean super hard, either like it's all energy or like get the funnel going. And I can sort of play in both of those realms, like really powerfully. So that's who I am and what I do. And yeah, I live in Austin. I have three kids and I love visuals. So it sounds like we're going to dive into that. Let's go. Yeah. You know what? You you, you just mentioned how you're both this side and that side, right? So I'm really curious, was it always that way for you in your business journey? No. And I think it, I think it was always that way for me as a, as a child, I definitely was super creative, but I think that most of us in the school system, especially like we, we were just taught creativity is important. Like, like this isn't important. Your emotions aren't, aren't important. And because for me, I also have a very strong, like I would call it masculine energy. I can do the logic. I can do the strategy. I like worked that muscle. And that was honestly, I worked in tech, I, like, which is let's, let's say like 90% men. Right. And so it was like, that was so well exercised for me. And then really coming into understanding that like I had allowed myself to dress in a feminine way, but like actually my entire energy and my being of like creativity, intuition, flow, receptivity was completely suppressed just because of the society I'd been raised in. So now I'm actually really curious because um, I I follow your journey. So I might have a a glimpse of, uh, of that, but I I think um it would be really cool for us to dive into um how initially when you started your your coaching your online coaching business it was really you were really known as like the mindset coach for entrepreneurs. Yeah. So would you yeah. say that was more like masculine, leaning more oh, towards yeah. that side? Yeah, I mean like when I first came, and I think it was honestly for a lot of people who come from like more like structured society, if they come into personal development or coaching, mindset's a really nice sort of like beginner level of like, like when I learned one of my first tools was like cognitive behavioral therapy stuff. Like some people call it the model. Everybody has a different name for it, right? But I'm like, oh, like my feeling can go inside a line here. And like, I can break down everything like a mathematical formula. And so that was something that my super strategic linear logical brain loved. And it has a lot of value. It's just sort of like not everything. Yeah. And how, like, how did that translate into your visuals at that time? I, it's so funny. I was actually just talking on a podcast yesterday about this. I presented very powerful, at, but very masculine, right? So like I would wear leather, right? Like I was, I was very, like, I had like the spiky earrings, right? It was a little, and I, I do have that strong side of me. Like, and so it wasn't inauthentic. It was just imbalanced and it wasn't integrated. And so it was interesting because like an interview I gave yesterday, she actually said like when she became aware of me, I was in that very masculine, powerful, like, you know, let's get shit done energy. And like there were, I I, like have my arms crossed and my photo shoots and my eyes would be like super serious. And she was like, you know, you weren't appealing to me at that time. And then I had this big shift where I basically just became an integrated whole human (laughs) and then called in a really different audience. That's so fascinating because that's, that sounds like me. I think I came across you at that point in time when you were definitely showing up in the red blazer, in the the more 
like masculine energy outfits. But then it wasn't until I saw this, this exact Zoom background. Yeah, that, yeah. That, you know, for those of you watching this podcast episode on on uh, YouTube, you're in for a visual treat right now. But it wasn't until I saw that when I was like, wait, who is this person again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was very intentional. And I can't tell you the number of people that have come and bought my programs and said it was like my Zoom background stopped the scroll for them online. And it was really fun because it was for me, one, it felt like so much better to just allow my creativity. Like I was always someone, I loved makeup. I loved style. I loved aesthetics. Like I, I like subscribe to interior design magazines just for fun. But I had been taught that's stupid, that's not practical, right? And I'm just like doing business development in the tech industry. And then I'm doing mindset in the coaching industry. And like, I had a mentor at the time that said branding was stupid and and because she was selling mindset, right? So of course she's selling what she wants you to buy. And then I had a thought, I'm like, oh, like, so I really want beauty to matter. I really want aesthetics to matter, but like a power structure above me told me it doesn't. And it really was me being like, oh wait, like I know me better. And actually like if I'm someone who understands visual aesthetics and like, let's be real, when someone goes to a wine store and they buy wine, like most people buy on the label. When people, like, I can't tell you how much time is spent when authors, like my sister-in-law just had a book published, how much time they spent on the book cover because people buy on the book cover. Right. And so when I finally decided to stop listening to what other people said, and I was like, no, I know I buy on visuals and aesthetics. And that's the first thing that stops the scroll for me. And I know how to do that. Right. So I was just like, if I know how to do that, why wouldn't I leverage that as a superpower in my business? And so I started allowing myself to express very intentionally with visual communication and the style of the clothes I was wearing in the Zoom background I had in like even like you'll I think we're getting a little fancier now because I have a team and like a a higher revenue business. But even like with videography, I'm like the creative director looking at like there's certain things with the videographer. I'm like, oh, no, I want this shot like this. I want the page turn like this. I want these things to look this way. And I do think it's important because it's not like only women have this ability. I actually have a friend. He's a man and he's like a very well-known architect and interior designer. And he called me out on this the other day. But I do think a lot of women have this desire, this love of beauty, this love of aesthetics. And we've been told it's stupid and impractical and it doesn't matter. And what I want to say is it's actually, if you have a desire to leverage that, you can make, you can print money from your ability to understand visual communication and aesthetics. Mm. Now, now that th- this question just popped up as you were speaking, which was, um, how did you decide on the the look that you're, that you have on right now? Because I know that's probably very intentional. So what was your thought process behind this particular look that you're wearing today? Like, I know you probably have other podcast interviews booked for today. So like, what was the thought process behind choosing this look for today? Well, so I mean, we could get into a whole thing, but it's like at this, whenever I'm like at my desk, I have to think about what visually will work with the background. There's days where I wear something and I'm like, oh, this color actually doesn't work with what I'm wearing. Right. But then there's just certain things where it's like, what, what am I wanting people? If this is the first thing, if they were to watch this on mute, what would they know about me? Right. And like, if they were to watch this on mute, what they would know about me is that like, I'm someone who's bold enough to show up in color. I took the time to like accessorize. I'm fun. I'm playful. Right. And they would also probably read from my body language that I'm very confident. Right. And, and like, I know what I'm saying, right. If they were to watch my body language, if they would look at my nails, right. It's like, I took the time to really think through if someone literally never even heard a word out of my mouth, what would they know about me? And it was so interesting. We ran, I think it was this past year, this past December, we put out like a survey to our entire audience And I cannot tell you the number of people that when it was like, how did you find out about me? People just like, they would see me at an event in Austin and they'd be like, who's that person, right? Like they just noticed what I was taking the time to wear. People like you, right? Like you became my client because you saw my Zoom background online, right? So it's just like, I'm just like, I know how to calibrate everything to communicate exactly what I want to communicate because I know who I am and I know who that's a best match for. And I'm going to express it with volume up at a hundred percent because it's going to draw my best people in quickly. You know, speaking of that, um, the earrings that I'm wearing right now, uh, again, for those of you watching this on the video, you're in for a treat, (laughs) a visual treat. Um, 
but it was around early 2022 when the brand alchemy accelerator was launched Mm -hmm. and I I joined that program when I started really thinking about um, the details and it was since then when I realized actually I actually really like big earrings but like for like the longest time I was like no just you know the the minimalist dainty earrings like that's what is acceptable I don't know where I got that from but it wasn't until I really saw you wearing your like your earrings when I was like some some there's something there I don't know what it is but I felt so drawn towards that like why do you think that happened the the small earrings uh no uh why do you think I was so drawn towards your earrings and that and I start like wondering yeah, so why was I right so I think if, if if I were to also talk about like what it is a lot of people come because they feel a bigness and a boldness inside of them mm-hmm. and I'm visually expressing it from the moment they see me right yeah. and so when people want that unleashed from within them they recognize I'm like an expander I'm an activator of that And I can't tell you that, I mean, you're in the accelerator, but what Cheryl's referencing is I have a foundational program called the Brand Alchemy Accelerator, and we do a lot of visual work in it. And like, for instance, the thing about wearing small earrings, I promise you, like women who are taught to wear small earrings are also taught to be small and water themselves down in their marketing, right? The way we do one thing is the way we do everything. And so I think it's like, as you sort of start to see, it's like, oh, wait, like, I want to wear bigger earrings and I want to make, I want to be bolder in like the words I'm using online, right? Like there's, I promise, right? Like it it all sort of flows down and is interlaced in like the way that we've just been conditioned to show up. Mm, Yeah. I love that. I I think that that speaks, um, that that's exactly what I think was going on for me when I started really questioning, why am I wearing dainty earrings on my videos and things like that? And yeah. I started, I started noticing myself being drawn at like the, the stores. Um, When I'm at a store, I'm like, why, why did I feel so drawn towards these earrings, these big, bold earrings? And yeah. when I see Catherine on the internet, I'm like, something, something is going on. I need to pay attention to this. Right. Yeah. But it's like those details matter. Right. And I think it's like, and and there's for anyone here that's listening, we're not saying big earrings are good. I think there's also people in my program and their whole thing is like, they, like, if you were to watch a video of this, I have a cosmic rainbow background. I got super rainbow earrings on, but I also have people in my program and they're like, no, I'm like a classic and I want like pearl studs and cashmere sweaters. And I'm like, that's a very different vibe. But if that's your vibe, then you should wear that to attract the people who are best for you. And so I think it's like to just make clear that like Cheryl's just saying like there's like a boldness. And I think it's like not even necessarily boldness that people are always attracted to with me. It's more just how deeply embodied I am in myself. Right. And I think that is like very much what the accelerator exists to do. And so, yeah, I just love that it's like this idea of coming home to ourselves. We can find it when we're out shopping for earrings. Yeah. And you know what? We've referenced this background for like a few times at this point. Could you tell us more about how this work of art came about? Because I know there's a story behind it. Yeah. So I have a I have a very good friend and Cheryl's in the program. So she knows she she knows the story. Right. But I have a friend who's a famous interior designer. Like she's like a total darling of like the Wall Street Journal and is like used to be the magazine editor. She she New York lady. Right. And she's actually, she does like um, visual branding work for the office inside of the program I run, the Brand Alchemy Accelerator. And she actually called me out because at the time, I don't know, I would think I was at around like 500,000 in a year in my business. And she noticed that I had these four tiny frames behind my desk and they were like cutesy. And honestly, they were like, I had redone my office. I had actually already done office work when I first started my business to, and it was me coming out of tech right? Where I was like surrounded by men. So it was my growth to allow myself to have pink and to allow myself to like have certain things that I felt like I couldn't have. But then I'd like started my business and then I'm in like a half a million dollar business going to multi-millions. And it just was incongruent, like my visual background and space. And so my friend who was in the interior design world, she like called me out. She was like, you are way bigger than those four tiny frames behind you. And I was like, oh, I think you're totally right. And I see exactly what you're seeing. And I see what that's communicating with that behind me all the time. And then I started thinking about like, I I started thinking about a new background as like a totem as I went into millions. And so I was like, what, what is the scale of that? 
So if you, if you were to look, and I guess if people are on, I'll just twist this around, but this is, I don't even know. It's like eight or nine feet. Of, it's like a gigantic canvas. It was the largest canvas this artist who I commissioned in Austin had ever done. We, we couldn't even get it up the stairs in my house. It was so big. We had to like pull it up by a rope onto like a third floor balcony. And um, I basically commissioned an artist who she's, she calls herself an energy artist. And I basically said, I want you to like actually paint my energy. Right. And so I remember I had given her like a, a Pinterest board and some ideas. And then she actually started watching my Instagram stories and she like started the canvas over because it was interesting. She was like, you're actually a lot bolder in how you're showing up. And it gave her different colors and textures that she wanted to bring through. And so I'm like, listen, y'all, you do not have to commission an energy artist to, <laughs> to paint your frequency on your Zoom background. But for me, I thought of it as like, this is a totem for me, one, and like to root in and ground in my bigness. It's me staking a claim and like, I understand visuals and I'm going to use it and like demonstrate this to the world. And three, it was like to, ha to have the audacity to ask someone to put my energy on like a <laughs> nine foot wide canvas stretched me, right? It was like uncomfortable for me to like think about honoring myself in that way. So that was, and I do think because I used that to stretch me, I now sit with it and it's almost like it's like feeding me the energy every day while I'm sitting here talking to you. It's like feeding me. That's the the way you described it. It's like feeding you, I think, um, because I know one thing you talk a lot about is like energy. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of my audience, they are familiar, familiar with phrases such as like mind management, time management, but yeah. energy management isn't really talked about. And I think you're alluding to that. So I think um, let's riff on that for a little bit, I guess. Um, I guess let's start with what does energy management mean to you or how would you define that? Well, I think for, for me, I mean, we could get real woo about it. It's like your life force energy, right? Like every single person. And I believe we all have souls and each of us has a different frequency and each of us has a different life force energy. But if we just went through a school system that told us to like get the right answer and like to test well and to like do the right thing, then the way our brain is working is how do I look at the external things around me and find the right answer versus like, how do I get super clear about what my unique energetic makeup is and what works best for me, right? So I think like we talked about the sort of world of mindset that I came into and like, for instance, time management was like, you put things on your calendar and you do them when you say you're going to do them and you manage your mind and you work when you don't want to work. And for me, that was like, that just didn't, like I could be disciplined I, and I could, and I did do that, but it just didn't feel good. Right. And so then I, when I started to think about, it, it's like, what if I just did everything to cultivate my life force energy? And I really rooted into the mission of what I want to do in the world. And like, I don't really need, like, I don't avoid things on my calendar. I don't like, I get a lot of work done when I want to rest, I rest. Then I get <laughs> sure. I think one of the things when you submitted, you were like, you got more done in the first four months of this year than like most people do in, in like an entire year. And so I have phases where I'm like super in, like there's just like a portal of creation that wants to come through me. And I think it, it feels more like the work is coming through me than I have to use my mind to like think of what to say, mm. which, so, which makes it so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess now the next natural question that I think people might have is like, okay, but like, how could that, like, what could that look like for me as someone who's like, they're intrigued by what you're saying, but they, yeah. they can't picture what that'll look like for them. Like, what would you say to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we could even talk about like, uh, we sort of start with this in the accelerator. Like the first thing I have people do is they make a board that's called your aliveness board. And like, I have people root into like, what's the next, like the next revenue level. And it's always something where it's like, you would have to become a completely different person. And I also like to think of it as, wait, am I allowed to curse in your podcast? Yes, go ahead. Okay. For <laughs> if anyone knows me, I have a little bit of a sailor mouth, but I just think of it as like, who are you at zero fucks when you like really just don't care what anyone else thinks. And that's your energy. Right. I think it's just like, and it's such an easy thing for us to think about. Like if I really gave zero fucks about what anyone else thought, what would be coming through me? 
And I mean, like then that just brings into stark awareness, all of like so many people are way out of alignment with what that person is for them. Mm. Yeah. Giving zero fucks. I, my brain is like going all over, the, like going different directions right now. So I'm trying to like pull one thought. Um, Let's make a pivot here. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that. Um, but like, what would you like, because I, I'm trying to like put myself in our audience's shoes right now. And I can imagine maybe a number of the listeners right now, they're like, they, they are really worried about what people think. Like they're, they're, they're right. They still give some fucks. Like, for yeah, and I word. promise that's keeping their revenue low. So if we want to bring it to like super tangible, why this matters, it's like what we have is a lot of people showing up online and creating a lot of content by looking at other people's content and making it super derivative derivative. So it's not interesting. It's not, it's just like, oh, like what are the people that are bigger than me doing? And let me just kind of riff on that or like sometimes straight up copy it. Right. And just like put it in a different format. Right. Or you have people who are like, oh, I like they're making content to literally not offend people versus making content to connect with potential clients. Those are completely different things. Right. And so when you think about what's, what's happening, when people are saying that they want to have a business and they're saying they want to make an impact and they're saying they want to be themselves in the world, but then they're just like giving all the fucks and they're that they're watering themselves down. They're not showing up like in their power and it, it makes them look like they're a commodity business. And so I, I talk about this a lot, but it's sort of like, when you think about when people buy like toilet paper or batteries, or I, I don't know, like things that for me, I just don't care. I go to the store and I'm like, what's the cheapest one, right? And so I often tell people, this is like when I talk about branding and the importance of brand, because when you have a strong brand online, people are coming to work with you specifically, not someone who does that thing you do, right? Right. And so a really good way to know, like, is like, do, are you showing up as, as like unique and differentiated is people are coming, asking to work with you specifically. And if they're coming to calls and they're price shopping, right. Or if they're coming to calls and they like have a lot of, it's just like, you are just showing up like one in a sea of many. Right. So I don't know. It's like, do you work with all coaches or all service providers or what's your, who, who's uh, your audience? Our audience are generally side hustlers who are building either a coaching or online service-based business. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, if you're like a coach and then you're just looking at like what, maybe you're looking at what Cheryl's posting and you're just sort of like riffing on what Cheryl posted or riffing on what another mentor of yours posted, like what's going to happen is anyone who's looking to hire someone who like understands mind management is they're just going to be like, this person just seems to be saying what everyone else is saying. And they're also not visually expressing it any differently. They're just showing up like everybody else. And so if you're showing up like everybody else, then your only differentiator can be that you have the lowest pricing and no one ever wants to be in that situation. It's a fucking race to the bottom. Don't play that game. (laughs) Yeah. This reminds me of how um, there was a point in time earlier on in my business journey where I would get on sales calls with potential clients and then yeah. at the end they're like oh thanks uh, I actually have more discovery calls of other people uh-huh. and and that and I kept on getting that objection I guess you can say like back to back to back at the the earlier parts of my journey and I was like why is this happening and I started to get like inklings that like oh it's probably because I'm I just look and sound like everyone else and then that was kind of like a sign for me to start thinking about how can I really differentiate myself and at that time I wasn't really familiar with the the, the tools of visuals and visual branding sure. but oh, I yeah. started thinking of what do I, I started leading into my story so that's how I got yeah. my, my how, how I started differentiating myself was really leaning back into my story and everything else that was inside my brain and starting there first so sure. it's, so that's why um I really resonated with what you just said um, actually, this nicely segues into another topic I really wanted to touch on with you which is the topic of thought leadership how would you define this word? I mean, I think to your point around, like you started leaning into your story. I think that's like just another realm. Thought leadership is just the world of what differentiates your thinking, right? And what makes you unique. And so, especially if like your people are just first starting, like it, they might not be able to jump into like, oh, I'm a thought leader, right? Like when I was first starting, if you told me that I would be like an industry leader, I'd be like, no, that's cute, right? Like, but can you get to like, my thoughts matter? 
can you get to like, I have a unique perspective on this, right? And can you start with like, maybe you don't have an entire body of work and like, maybe you're not like Cheryl with like tons of podcasts and probably lots of unique teachings, right? That she's done for you. But do, do you have just a unique take on something? And can you take the time to write about that, right? And so I think sometimes like just... I think thought leadership is important to differentiate yourself in an industry, but I also think like if anyone's at the point where that word spins them out and feels too big and keeps them from getting started at all, like don't let that be the thing, right? Just get started with like, I'm going to post and I'm going to have an interesting thought. And what happens is when you have a series of interesting thoughts, those become a body of work, right? And so I think for that, it's like everyone has their unique story, like, I think, Cheryl, you said that you left the law. Was that right? Yeah, I was a law school dropout. Yeah. And so I think like that's probably something that for a lot of your audience is like deeply resonant of like, oh, I like I'm doing the thing that I think I should be doing or maybe my parents told me. Right. And it like it's so healing for them to like hear your story. Right. And then there's also going to be certain things around like mo modality or your your unique perspective. Like, I think for me, because I came from the world of like the mind and became super well known with like, I can do rigorous strategy. I can find tiny words that are off in a funnel. And I can like, I can do that kind of work. And then I can also talk about like explosive branding and cosmic rainbows. And I can also talk about like archetypal energies and like spiritual practices, right? And so I think because of that, it's like, the, the way that I'll teach something is very different, right? Like I've gotten training in the nervous system. So like the intellectual property and thought leadership that I'm going to have is going to be totally different than someone else who's like, I'm just following my desire, right? And like what I feel like is aligned with my gifts and someone else's gifts are going to be totally different from mine. And mm. so if you just like, if you lean into your story and then you also just keep following, like, if, if I want to keep mastering my craft, what does that look like? And I was like thinking about this the other day, um, like we mentioned in the beginning, I came in through the world of mindset and like, I'm fairly well known in like the LCS world. Right. So I don't know if your audience like comes from that world. I don't even know if you come from that world. Right. But like, there's a lot of people that if like they were to find me now we're going into ads, they would never know that that's my lineage. Right. Like they wouldn't know because at this point it's so well blended. My body of work, my thought leadership, I do shamanic practices. I do nervous system regulation. I do like mindset management. I can like, and because it's all blended together, I give homage to my lineage. I'm like so proud of like everything that I've learned. But at the same time, I'm different. You can't get what I teach anywhere else because like, I have a very unique perspective. And I think the same thing is going to be true. Like no one has Cheryl's story and Cheryl's tools and Cheryl's concepts the way that Cheryl has, right? And so if anyone's listening and you're like just starting out, just recognize that like I was just starting out four years ago and Cheryl was just starting out, I don't know how long ago, but <laughs> a handful of years ago, right? Like we all start at ground zero, and just recognize that like, it's just those of us who believe in ourselves enough to like, I have something unique to say right now with like, I don't need all the fancy training or all the whatever. All I need is my story. And I know Cheryl, that's something for you. You're like really good at helping people sort of lean into what their unique story is. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that. Um, the emphasis on the story, because, um, for me personally, this law school quitting story, it's been like six years at this point. It's been, it's been a little while, but yeah. actually next week I have um, uh, a speaking event, an in-person speaking event where they want me to speak on my story. Actually, um, yeah. for, for context, I actually quit law school six years ago and I quit my PhD last year. So I have a double quitting story and, um, and people really want me to speak on it so all that so yeah. that just really a uh, case in point basically that okay. your story it matters and if you're going to start somewhere start there first and then right. the rest your concepts every your thought leadership your body of work all of that will fall into place but you have to keep going first and foremost right um and and i think it's like so interesting to think about like your story is going to repel some people but it's going to attract the right people right so like for Cheryl's, there's some people that like hear Cheryl's story and they're like, oh, wow, I can't believe she left the law. And I, oh, and then she gave up her PhD. Like, what is she thinking? Right. Like, 
she's crazy. And then there's like other people that are like, oh, Cheryl just went for it. And she's like building this online business and she's like making all this money and she's doing stuff that she like loves to do. Right. So she's like, Cheryl's repelling the people she doesn't right? like sort of the older paradigm work until you're 65, two weeks to vacation people. And she's calling in people that want to align themselves to a life and a body of work. That's more similar. Mm. For the audience member who is listening and thinking like, okay, I know what my story is. I know what I want to say, but I honestly, I feel like I'm going to go into panic mode if I share my story and like, I know someone disagrees with me or someone yeah, judges yeah. me. Like how yeah. would, how could they at least start to calm the chatter in their, in their minds? Any thoughts on that? Well, I think they should hire you. I mean, I really do think like this is, I am such a fan of like having support, whether it's like a coach, a program, something like that, because one, yes, can could I give you a tip on like deep breathing and regulating your nervous system and like, and getting clear about like, what are you afraid they're going to say? And where do you agree with that? And like, how can you unwind that thought? But like the truth of the truth is like, that, that like sort of deconditioning and like being willing to come out and tell your truth is very, it's uncomfortable. Right. And I think it's like, can we just be honest that it's like the, the reason why, like most people aren't willing, right. I think to come out of the boxes that are binding them. Right. And so I would say, yeah, can you lean on free resources like this podcast? Can you lean on free classes? Can you lean on like things like that? But I really just deeply believe like this is your life. This is your story. And if you're recognizing, at least for me, whenever I want to do something where like I want to straight up puke because it's like so far out of my comfort zone, I for sure know I want to have either a mentor, a community, like whether it's a, a program that I join with a community or a mentor or coach to hold me through it. Um, because support matters, right? And if we're doing super scary things and we feel like we're alone, it's so easy to quit. And like the other thing I'll say is like, cause I see some people, they like aren't, they, they like don't value themselves enough to like invest. And then they're trying to like cobble together peer like accountability stuff. And then everybody's just like scared <laughs> and freaking out. And so, I mean, if you want to ask me the question again and tell me to like say a tangible tool, but like, I really think the best advice I could give is like, put yourself into a container that's going to support you through like, probably one of like the, probably one of the scarier chapters of your life. Right. Cause it's like super easy. Like for instance, like if you go to law school, like, oh, that's hard, but it's not putting you outside of any comfort zone that society put. Right. Whereas like coming into your alignment and doing what you want to do in the world you're like probably leaving, like you probably have like friends and like moms giving you side eye and you're going to want a support system that's not giving you side eye. Yeah. I, I, I love that because um, I've definitely shed more tears building my business than in law school. <laughs> um, oh, you know I've what? cried more <laughs> building my business than anything else. Yeah. I'm now super curious. Um, what, because we, we touched on like the topic of like fears and things like that. I'm super curious. Like what were your fears in your journey in different part, stages of oh. your journey? Like, I mean, if we go back to just even thinking about like, we're talking to your audience and you said they're side hustlers. So they're earlier on. Like I was terrified people. Like if you, if you know anything about me now, I've like had naked photo shoots and put them on social media. Like I just don't care anymore. But in the beginning, my Instagram profile picture was like my logo, right? I was using stock photos. I was terrified of being seen and I didn't want anyone to say anything mean about me. I remember I like posted and I, I was like so proud of myself to be brave and like post. And then I made a typo and like my aunt commented to like point out that I'd made a typo and I wanted to just die in a hole. Right? So like, It's just so important, right? Like to just recognize there's like, it's going to be a series of little things that now I can laugh about. I'm like, I cannot believe I cared about a typo. Right. But like, I was really scared to, to be seen as like, not perfect to be seen as like, like I really, it was like my ego at this point. I, I love beauty and visual and aesthetics as a form of expression, 
But in the beginning, I was like, how do I present myself to make the exact right impression? And like, and really when I would post, it was more to like, try to make it look like I was successful for like all of my old tech worker friends than to like write to clients. Right. And then, I mean, we could even talk about like last year, I blew up like a high multiple six figure business and I had to be willing to just like go and just trust that people who were like supportive and into my new direction would come and find me. And I think it's like, because I'd supported myself for years and years on doing things that were scary. I don't think most people could do that. I don't think most people could walk away from like a revenue, like level like that. And then just decide that they were going to like build everything again. Um, but I think it's like, at that point, I just had my back so deeply for so long that I was able to just hold myself through it. And now I'm just like, it's seriously like come back stronger than ever. Like, oh, I don't know. I could talk about funnels. Like I talk about all the things, but I'm like, I just had to be willing to start over in what I knew was my truth and alignment. Mm. How, how do you, how, how do you know, like, the difference between like, this is your truth and your alignment, like the direction you want to go versus like, let's say someone like maybe they're not signing clients and now they're like, they want to like jump ship and pivot completely. Like yeah, how, yeah. how would you differentiate between the two? Like it, for someone who might be in that like position where they're like, I want to, I want to burn everything down and start over. Yeah. How can I mean, they differentiate? I think it's, it, to, I would say, and this is where if you're not in the feeling realm real deep, like you're not, it's going to be hard to tell. For me, I think of it as like the, I call it like texture. Like what is the texture of this? And so if I'm like, if I'm trying to do something to like avoid something or to like squirm out of like, I'm very, I'm very familiar with like my feeling of like discomfort. So let's not do it. Right. Like I know that feeling in my body. So I just know not to listen to it. Right. Like I know it's just like, oh, it's hard. So I want to quit. So like, we never listen to that voice anymore. That's just like a, like canceled. Like you are, I, I will honor you. And I'm going to say like, it's okay. I love you, but I'm going to carry you with me. Like you're for sure not driving the car. Um, and I also would just say at this point, like, I know the difference in my body between what intuition is and what thought is. And for anyone in your audience that like, is it all spiritual? I will also say, because at this point I've been around way too many spiritual people that think like their intuition gives them like the key to like it being successful the moment they do it. And I'm like, no, no, no. We get like intuition and guidance. And then we actually have to be good at business <laughs> to actually transmit and bring through the guidance. So that kind of could be a whole different wormhole, but maybe we'll leave that there for now. Yeah. So for, for uh, the audience who may not be too familiar with the before and after of your, your, your business, uh, uh -huh. could you just quickly tell uh, uh, the audience, like, what was your business looking like before and after the, the major shift last year? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think before we sort of started with like, I used to wear leather leggings and I had my arms folded in my photo shoot. And it was very much like, come and master your mind and your time management. And it was like all sort of masculine energy strategy, like that whole vibe. And I basically just went, I've had like, I would call it like a very large spiritual awakening. And I've just come into like owning all parts of myself, which is like, I am equal parts, like, I don't know, like super strategic thinker and artist. And I allow those both to express through me. And so at this point, like I have a high level scaling mastermind that has a sexual energy course on like how to use sexual energy to like overcome mindset blocks. Right. So like I am allowing all of these different parts of me that include spiritual practices and archetypal work and things with the mind, but understanding intuitive knowings. Right. So like I basically let go of a mastermind that was making over half a million dollars a year and was like very well known all over the world. And I just like announced, I was like, this is it. And I let it go and I walked away and I'll be honest, it wasn't like everything came right back right away. Like it was, I actually, you know, there's like that uh, poem, the footsteps poem. I'm not like a Christian, but there's like a poem where it's like, you thought you were walking alone in the sand, but like I was carrying you. Like that's been me this last year. I'm just like, okay, I took the guidance. Where are we going? Right. And I think it's, it's been like, it made me had to had to get so much better at business than I ever was before to build an audience back faster to market completely different programs. Like, and it was so fun because I, I took that as a challenge of like, this forges me 
into like the next version of myself where it's like, if someone's coming to market something that seems kind of weird or doesn't seem to make sense, I'm like, I got you, my friend. I know exactly how to do it. <laughs> you know what? Actually, speaking of uh, sexual energy, we actually had an audience member message me today because I posted on my Instagram stories that you're going to be on the podcast and they DM me and they were so excited and I asked them, Hey, do you have any questions for Catherine? And they actually um wrote back and said, okay, so she talks a lot about pleasure and I'm curious about her daily pleasure practices and how tapping into her pleasure has helped her business or how she weaves pleasure into her coaching business. Mm. Anything you want to say to that? Yeah. I mean, I would just say we, we sort of talked about earlier about like, there's a difference between like viewing yourself as like, I'm the minion who has to like do the things on my calendar versus like, I'm fucking royalty and I cultivate my aliveness. And then I fuel that into all of the creation that comes through me. And my husband does joke on ancestry.com. I found out I'm a descendant of Richard the Hyatt, the Lionhearted. And my husband's always just like, you're just trying to get back to your Royal lineage. <laughs> it's like, for me, when it's like, I have such tremendous respect and regard for myself as like the baseline and that's where it starts. So like, if I want to take a bubble bath, I took a, like an hour long bubble bath to start my morning, right? Like I just allow myself things that nourish me because I recognize when I'm nourished and when I'm in my pleasure and when I'm at my best, that's when my creativity is at its highest. That's also when my strategic thinking is at its highest. Right. Whereas like, if you think about people that like think that they're like, um, their value is their productivity, they're often overworking. They're not sleeping enough. They're fueling themselves oftentimes with caffeine and alcohol. Right. And like, and their output actually becomes like not their best work. They're working at like maybe half capacity. And then because they're at half capacity, they have to work overwork many more hours. Whereas for me, I'm just like doing things that set like I had wonderful hot sex with my husband last night. And then I had a bubble bath this morning and like, and people think they're like, no, that's like, that's different from business. And I'm like, I promise you when I set that as the baseline of my life, I want to show up in my business. I want to work more because I've taken care of myself and I'm able to get more done than most people are in, in like many, many hours because I'm at my best. Mm. I... Okay, I think the audience member, the audience members who are, who get it, like it's clicking for them. They're like, yeah. but, 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 but Catherine, I don't have time for all of these things. Just any final words for that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's funny. There was like a, a meditation guy once when someone was like, I don't have time to meditate. Then he was like, then you need to meditate longer, right? Like if, if you're like so dysregulated that you don't even have time to like sit down and meditate for 10 minutes, right? And so I do think, and I remember just like ha having this feeling, I was on this hamster wheel where it was like, I had to work all the time. And then I had to like feed my kid. I had to like do all these things. And I had to be willing to step off the hamster wheel and be like, what here did, like is really that important. And actually if I set, like so many people set all of the work stuff they have to do as like the first thing. And then they try to squeeze in a little bit of taking care of themselves if they have time versus like when I just start with what needs to be in my calendar so that I'm like well cherished and taken care of, I can get more done in an hour, right? Like what takes most people six hours, I can get done in an hour, right? And so I, I just like, if I can sell anyone on that idea of just like, if you make sure that you're at your best, you're eating well, you're exercising, you're like nourishing yourself, right? You're, you're having connection with friends, I can't tell you how many people overwork in their business and then they can't remember the last time they like did something fun. And I'm like, do you think that's maybe impacting the quality of your work? <laughs> but people don't understand that like it is the energy they bring to their work that actually impacts how effective it is. Mm, I love that. I love that. And I think with that, this leads us to perhaps let's let's end this conversation on a fun note. I'm I'm curious, what do you do for fun, Catherine? Do it. I mean, I have a lot of sex. <laughs> um, I love going out with girlfriends. I love travel. I've been to like over 50 countries in my lifetime. I, I mean, I have three kids. So like, I actually, I'll be real honest. I don't enjoy hanging out with all three of them for long periods of time. Cause it's too much chaos. But if you give me one kid, like I love just connecting with them. Like I took my seven-year-old to like a bougie hotel last weekend and we got room service and like the whole thing. Um, so I think it's probably just like 
what most, I mean, you know, I love visuals, so I could go shopping and just playing on the internet. Right. So I don't know. I don't really think it's anything that different than like most other people and like what they like to do for fun. I just make sure I'm always doing it. Oh, we're renting a boat. That's what I'm doing. I just told my husband last night. I'm like, so right now I'm doing hot girl summer. Cheryl probably knows because she's in my audience, but I just decided I was like, I'm having hot girl summer. And like, so I'm just talking to my husband all the time about like, what does hot girl summer mean? And I was like, honey, I want you to run us a boat and I want to like take our friends out and like, we're just going to have fun. So, you know, just do fun things, make memories. That's, that's lovely. And I, I, I'm also really, it's, it's, um, podcast season a part of the hot girl summer yeah so I was like what sounds fun to me Uh, because I was like I mean Cheryl knows this but uh, you all probably don't know who are listening the first four months of this year I was like a craftswoman at her workbench just like so much stuff in the business and back-end SOPs and like creating things and people would like write in to see if I could like come and and speak at their summit or like be on their podcast and it's just like part of running a company is you have to know how to prioritize but I love connecting with people right so like when I got done with those four months I was like my hot girl summer is like clearing up I've had so much fun I think I have like six interviews like between yesterday and today and I just, it's been really nice to connect with you. And yeah, that's part of fun for me is like connecting with you all. So that's Amazing. part of my fun too. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of fun in the past 45 <laughs> minutes. I'm sure the audience, especially again, for those of you watching the video version of this episode, I'm sure you had a lot of fun as well. So, Hey, if you're, if you're listening to the audio version, I would highly suggest hopping <laughs> onto YouTube and subscribing to the channel to see all of this, this all of this energy oh, here. Way to sell them, Cheryl. I love it. Yes. Remember Get to subscribe there. when Hit you're the there. Hit the subscribe button. Exactly. All righty, Catherine, where can people find you and how can people work with you? Yeah. So you can find me at CatherineMorrisonCoaching.com. I'm going to trust you're going to have this in the show notes, so I don't need to like spell it all out. Right. So just go to the show notes. So you can find me at CatherineMorrison.com, CatCoaching.com. I'm on Instagram at CatherineMorrisonCoaching. And oh, my podcast, if you listen to podcasts, which we know you do, I have a podcast called Ascension Through Entrepreneurship. And then I have three different programs. I have my branding program, which Cheryl is in. I have my messaging. Pro- Actually, she has two of my programs. <laughs> so, I just I joined brand- the other yeah. one. Yeah. So I have a branding program called the Brand Alchemy Accelerator, where you really come into like embodying your unique energy and figuring out what that looks like visually. I have a messaging mastermind called Words or Wands. And then I have a scaling mastermind called Pleasure and Precision. Incredible. Thank you so much for being here. And to everyone else who's listening, thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.